Hey folks, today I'm going to explain about this electric bike kit that I purchased. I'm going to go over what the parts are and things you need to know about the parts, things on how to put the wheel together, and some very important things about mounting and the chain. This is the electric bike motor kit that I purchased on Amazon. And this is, might be the one that you're looking at right now. Let me go through the components really quick. This is the actual bike motor. This motor, I've put about 100 miles on it, and it works really well. Here, of course, is your chain. You may have to lengthen or shorten this chain depending on your bike. This is the axle that goes inside of the wheel. It's likely you'll be needing this, this axle because the previous one that came with the kit was not wide or long enough. This is the sprocket. You will be needing this. This is the mounting plate. Mounts very easily. This is the electric bracket in which you can hook everything up. Works very well. This is the, bicy the bicycle light. I'll tell you right now, this bicycle light and horn is useless. It does not bright very, light up very well at all. The handles, you could put these on. You really don't need them, these little brake, brake handle lights. They're basically brake lights. And then finally, the, the handles here um, work very well. It's just like a motorcycle. And that's about it for now. Here's something to know about the bicycle itself. I took this regular bicycle that you could buy at any Walmart store. One of the things that you want to look for that might make things a bit easier for you is try to find a bike that doesn't have square or sort of an oval type tube. You want a round tube that makes it a little bit easier. Also is on mounting hardware that they provide, there's these little brackets that mount the motor here. These brackets are made of a very cheap sort of aluminum metal and they strip out very easy. So you want to be careful with those. However, if you're not careful enough and they actually strip out, you can easily go down to Home Depot for 49 cents and buy a couple of these brackets here. The other thing on your bike that you're going to use for this electric bike, make sure it has a bike tensioner or chain tensioner. It's going to need one of these because it's very unlikely your chain is going to fit right the first time due to the way this thing is mounted. You're also going to need some twist ties to hold up your wires. You're going to need some connectors also. You're going to also need to buy a couple batteries. Batteries are going to be about 50 bucks. You can find them on Amazon. Get, you're going to need two 12 volt batteries that are at least around 10 amps or so. Mine were 13 that I purchased for $50. I'll show you what those are later. And then finally you're going to need something to hold the batteries. In this case here, I went to Walmart and found this nice little carry thing here. It's got a plastic tray in it in which the batteries fit in very well. I just had to put some spacers in there to make sure they're packed in really well. And then finally, I found it's best if you could find a seat that has these sort of springs in there. So when you're going down the road, it feels really good, or feels better anyways. Now, as far as speed goes on this particular motor, given the sprocket or freewheel that comes with the kit, it's going to allow you to go approximately 15 miles an hour top speed. But it's really nice because you, you can assist on your pedals and you still get a little bit of exercise. However, when you're going up hills, you can use the electrical assist and it helps you get up them and it makes it just for a nicer ride. Finally, make sure your brakes are in good condition because you're going a little bit faster um, and you're carrying a little bit more weight. Um, adjust them brakes up so uh, you don't um, go past your target, um, which may be a big street um, on which you're going to say hello to a bumper. Okay, folks, in this segment, we're going to talk about the wheel assembly. First off, your particular wheel that you have has a gear on it like this. And this gear is threaded in the inside. And this threaded gear will be threaded onto your wheel. But what you have to do is get a tool or bring it to your bicycle shop to have this gear removed. Once you remove this gear, it will then allow you to put on the sprocket that came with the kit. You will then screw this socket on, or this sprocket on, or free wheel as they call it. The next thing that you'll do is there's a little, uh, um, a, a little device that looks like a drum that screws in the inside of this sprocket. You'll then screw that on inside of it. 
Then the next thing you'll do is there's a little washer looking thing that will screw on on the outside of that drum adapter. That serves as a spacer between the two sprockets, which is really important. You can see the spacer here between the two sprockets. The spacer is important to keep the sprockets apart. Finally, you'll have to buy a new freewheel sprocket in order to, um, to, you know, to get this thing to work. Now, the other option is to buy online a hub that has two, two freewheel spl um, splines in it. So, so you could put one on this side and this sprocket here on the other side. In my case, I left it all on the same side. Finally, to put these on, you're going to have to first put, on, put in the bearing, then put on a, a spacer holder thing that goes inside of there, um, and then you'll see how to put the rest of it together. The other thing that's very important is spacers. Hopefully you'll have some additional spacers that you can use so it spaces out correctly when you mount the wheel. Hey folks, today we're going to go over some mounting considerations. The first thing is on your motor. The thing to understand is when you put this motor on right here, it can only move up so far or go down so far. The second thing to notice here is on the plate, the mounting plate. The mounting plate has a slot that goes in one direction, but if you notice on the bike itself, the slot is going in a different direction right here. This, this one is going up and down right there, and the other one is coming in this direction. There's only going to be almost one spot that the axle is going to rest in and because of that you are going to need a chain tensioner. I use the one from the old bike and it works really good. You just need to move it in and out of exactly where you need it. And please understand also that these little screws here will allow you to move this thing in, in further um, in order to match up with your sprockets. So you basically get your wheel in there, make sure it's centered, which is going to be a little bit of an issue also because you have had new spacers on your wheel. But I'm going to put it on here and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, I've mounted the wheel on, but I have not tightened anything down. Take a look at the sprocket here. Let me flip this around. If you notice the spacers here, i got one long spacer that I got from the bike in there. And then right next to it, I, on the outside, I have another spacer. Then on the outside of this, if you notice here, I'm going to put a washer plus a nut. The spacers are very important because this small chain from the motor may drag. It may drag on the frame right here. Um, so you have to get it in far enough where it doesn't drag on the frame. The other side is pretty simple. Um, you just put some spacers and a few washers in there. One thing to note is the metal on the axle that they provide is pretty soft. So I had to use a re-threader to get it threaded. So be careful with that because the metal is soft and it will strip. And of course you can see here that I talked about earlier these, these brackets I got from Home Depot which worked really well. They're much more stronger than the ones that came in the kit. Okay folks, we have this thing fully mounted. The key thing that I want to show you is that I reuse this chain tensioner here. Notice the chain does not go on the back sprocket. What I found on mine was that I was able to get it to line up just using the bottom bracket here or the bottom um, wheel on this chain tensioner that you can see right here. And I could get it lined up fairly well. So if you take a look at the chain, you can see that it goes to the left just a little bit. but um, it was able to stay on in both directions and that's the key thing is to make sure that it stays on when you're backpedaling without any tension or when you go forward. The only thing that I couldn't get to work perfectly is I still have this sound as it rakes across rakes across this little um, this chain tensioner here. I'm going to have to uh, work on that a little bit to see how I can get that sound to go away maybe make some adjustments. The other thing that I did is I used a twist tie right here that you can see um, to, to uh, adjust how far in this 
tensioner goes into the wheel. Of course, there was a cable on here before that you would adjust, you know, to a setting one, two, three, um, when you're riding your bike. Um, but I had to take that off because I needed to put on the throttle handle, and then I put um, this twist tie to adjust the um, tensioner there. The other thing that I had to do is down here I had to tighten this up, loosen it, bring the tensioner up to put tension on the chain and then to tighten it in that position also. Normally you would not have to do that because this wheel right here would actually provide the needed tension. Next we're going to take a look at the batteries and how they're put into their little carrying case and how they're hooked up. I showed you the batteries just a little bit ago. One thing to know is 12 volt batteries have to be hooked up in series. So you'll actually connect, as you can see here, a positive and a negative together on the inside and then you'll have your other connections on the outside, which would be the other positive and the other negative, that will be hooking up to the wires that go into the, uh, con the um, unit, the, el the el electrical unit that they provide you in the kit. Right now I'm charging them, charging one of the batteries till it's full capacity. What I bought online was a nice little charger here that is also like a, a trickle charger or a maintenance charger. Um, and it ended up being pretty nice. Now the problem with using this 12 volt charger is you have to hook it up on each battery at a time. Fortunately, I was able to reuse a charger from my boy Scooter which is how this whole project started, is we wanted to reuse the, the scooter motor, but found out that we couldn't because we could not find a, a sprocket with a 8 millimeter D shaft, or that fit an 8 millimeter D shaft, anywhere on the internet. So we had to, and so I thought about buying a new motor, just the motor only, that 1016 motor, but after it was all done, I said, I might as well buy the mounting plate too and just buy the whole thing so I don't have to deal with it much. Which ended up being a smart decision because I would have been tinkering with this thing for a long time to get it to work if I was to reuse those scooter parts. The other thing is I wanted to show you this thing comes with a key switch. It works really well to turn on, on and off. And here's the bag I bought from, from Walmart, um, this, this tray bag here. Um, as I mentioned, there is a plastic liner in this thing. You can see down in here. Um, right here, um, the plastic liner really is really good for these, these batteries here. Here are the two batteries that I purchased from Amazon. They were approximately $50 total, including shipping. They worked very well with the bike and they last a really long time. Um, really long time means about at least 20 miles. I haven't gone further than 20 miles in one day. Okay folks, we're going to go over the total cost of this electric bike. First off, you got $130 for that motor and plate kit that comes with the lights and the handles and things like that. You have batteries, going to cost you about $50. You have battery holder, which will cost you about $20. We have a sprocket down here that's a second sprocket. That's an additional one to the one that comes in the kit. That runs about $20. Then you have some miscellaneous items here such as um, wire clips and plate clamps and spacers and washers and plastic ties for a total cost of $230. I would suggest you look at other electrical bicycle kits such as the one that has the motor that's in the front wheel. Now understand if you decide to get that one you're still going to have additional costs for batteries, possibly a battery holder and some of these other miscellaneous items. But I hope this video helped you. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.